Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at how to do a clean install of Yosemite. Now in most cases the upgrade uh, from Mavericks to Yosemite is the way to go. Usually everything works out fine and your upgrade goes well and, and goes pretty quickly and everything's up and running. But there are times when you may want to do a clean install. Maybe when your machine is uh, slowing down you notice some problems and issues, so you might want to do a clean install that way. Uh, in some cases, if you're working with things like OS X Server, sometimes you need to just wipe everything clean uh, to start over with that, to just start from scratch. And so what I want to do today is show you how to do that clean install. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. Uh, one way is built into every uh, OS X install uh, is a recovery partition that's hidden, hidden on your hard drive. And if you wanted to do it that way, you would just reboot, uh, actually shut down your machine, and then hold down Command-R, and then boot your machine with those two keys held down, and it will boot you into that recovery partition, and you can install the OS that way. Now, in order to do that, uh, that's making the assumption, in this case we're looking at Yosemite, that you've already upgraded to Yosemite because that recovery partition will be set up then to reinstall Yosemite. If you're still on Mavericks and you want to do a clean install with the recovery partition, you need to first do the upgrade to Yosemite, then shut down your machine, hold down Command-R, and boot into that. So it's just something to keep in mind if you're looking at doing that. Now, what I did in a previous screencast is showed you how to create a USB installer that you can boot from and actually reinstall the uh, OS X. As you can see here, this is the recovery uh, USB installer that I put together uh, before. You can see it's right here. I've got this install OS X. Now, if I double-click this to do the install from there, it will basically just do an upgrade in place so it wouldn't wipe out my hard drive and, and install from there. So in order for us to use this installer, uh, to be able to wipe out our hard drive because we're looking at a clean install and then do a clean install of, Yo of Yosemite on top of it, uh, we're going to need to restart. Now, as I've said in previous screencasts, you want to make sure you have a good backup. Uh, I recommend a bootable backup just in case something goes wrong. And you could also have a time machine backup to replace things. The bootable backup obviously allows you to get back in place a lot quicker, but just wanted to make sure I let you know that because what we're going to do is going to wipe out your hard drive, which means all of the data on your main Mac boot drive is going to be erased. So you want to know that uh, as you get started so you don't make that mistake. Now to do that clean install, uh, you just want to come up here to the Apple and we're going to do a restart. Now when you do the restart, you want to hold down the Option key because that's what's going to allow us to choose uh, whether we want to boot from our main hard drive or whether we want to boot from the installer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to need to switch over to my camera just to show you what that looks like. Okay, here we are at the reboot. And as you can see here, I've got uh, various options for what I can boot into. I can uh, boot into the server hard drive, which is where I'm at right now. Or if I want, I can just toggle over. And there's my server backup that I've got that I can boot out of. That was the bootable clone that I had set up. And here I've got this install OS X Yosemite, which was our USB boot drive. And so what you want to do is select that to boot into. And once you've selected it, just hit Enter. And as you can see now, we're going through the boot process where it's booting off of that USB drive. Now, depending on the type of USB drive you use, that will determine how fast your machine will reboot or install OS X. Uh, mine's a USB 3 uh, boot drive, so it should be a little bit faster than most. But if you're USB 2, uh, it's going to be a little bit slower. So just know that it won't be quite as fast as the internal hard drive on your Mac but it will definitely get the job done. So I'm going to let this go ahead and do uh, its reboot, and once it's done, I'll come back and show you what we've got on the other side. So we have a number of options. We can restore from a Time Machine backup. Uh, we can install OS X, and we can get help online, or we can use Disk Utility. Now, in, in normal cases where you just want to do a fresh install, but you want to keep all of your information intact, you would just do a regular install of OS X. And this is basically just either an upgrade or you're installing a new copy of OS X uh, over the top of your existing uh, setup. Now that's not a clean install, so you don't want to do that. Uh, we want to do a clean install first, which means we need to wipe out our disk. So we need to go to Disk Utility first. So we're going to select that and we're going to say Continue. And it's going to take us right into Disk Utility. And so here we are with Disk Utility and it's going to load for a minute. It's going to gather my disk information so I can see it in the sidebar. And there we go. So you can see here's all of the information I've got. I've got my 
uh, my basic uh, backup drive over here. So I've got my server backup. You can see that's the Time Machine backup. This is the um, USB drive that I've got installed. And so we're actually booted off of this install Yosemite. That's what we're using right now uh, to get us running. And so this is our server hard drive right here. And so as you can see, I've got a uh, basically, I've got a fusion drive that's running here, and that's what we're looking at uh, in this zone here. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and wipe that. Now, when you do this, you're wiping out all the information on that drive. So you want to make sure you got a good backup, uh, because otherwise you're going to lose everything once you do this uh, to wipe it out. So I want to go ahead and select that, and I can go over here to partition on this side. And you can see that right now I've got, uh, I've got one partition, uh, and it's all set up the way uh, that, I, that I would want it and uh, you can see there's no other partition. Now you notice here I can't do anything with that because that's at the top level. So what I want to do is come down here and this is where I want to go ahead and do the erase. And so I want to leave it at OS 10 Extended Journaled. Uh, leave that alone. I want to leave the name the same. If you want to change the name you could do that right here. And then what we want to do is uh, just click Erase. And you can see I've got data on there right now. Now again once I hit Erase then everything stops, uh, everything gets erased, and then I've got to install OS 10 at this point uh, in order to make uh, make that work, and we're starting over. So again, you want to make sure you got a good backup, that everything's in place and ready to go, and then you go ahead and hit Erase. And so it asks you, you sure you want to erase this partition? We're going to say Erase. And now it's going through the process of unmounting the drive, uh, the disk, and it's going to erase that hard drive and you can see it's formatting the file system there for us and it could take a few minutes just depends on uh, you know how long it, it takes to work there but again right now I'm erasing everything so I am actually starting over so you want to be cautious again in doing this you want to make sure your backups are there it's mounting the disk now and as you can see now it's only used 815 megabytes of space and we've got everything uh, available there so this now is a blank uh, disk and so we're ready to go to install OS 10 now so what we're going to do is just go ahead and close disk utility down and then what we're going to do is click on install OS 10 and click continue okay so I'm just going to click continue here and now it's going to ask me to agree uh, with all the different terms of licensing agreement I'm going to agree there and click agree again and so now it's going to ask, where do I want to install OS 10? It gives me all these disks. Well, this is the one I want to do. That's the drive that I just formatted. It's my server hard drive there. And so we're going to go ahead and do the install right there on that drive. So we're going to say install. And now what it's going to do is go through the process of getting all of the uh, files and things that it needs to actually do the install. And so, again, it uh, just depends on uh, connection and things like that on how long this is going to take. As you can see, it says about six minutes remaining. Uh, I'll keep an eye on that clock to see how accurate it is. Uh, sometimes, you, sometimes you'll get those numbers up there. You might have to wait a little longer than it says, or sometimes it's a little bit faster. So I'm going to let this run, and when it comes to the end there, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here we are in the final countdown uh, to the restart, and it is pretty much right on track. And so uh, it was about six minutes for that download. Here we're down to the final seconds and it should now reboot on its own uh, to begin the install process. So once it's finished up here, uh, we've got a, it says about a second remaining. Obviously that's a little longer than a second. Uh, but overall it is pretty, uh, pretty in line with what it said in terms of how long it would take. So I'm going to let this run so we can see it restart here. And once it uh, restarts then we'll go from there. Okay, here we are on the reboot. Now, it did take uh, quite a while for that to happen. It took an extra seven minutes or so uh, for it to actually reboot. And then it took a little bit of time also to uh, actually reboot and go through that initial startup screen that you just saw a little while ago. So just know that that has been reported. That is the case uh, for that. It's always best just to wait it out uh, as opposed to trying to rush it or force it or restart it because then you've got an incomplete installation and you're probably going to be starting over. So that is a common issue that uh, other people have had uh, from the various research that I've done on this. So now it says we've got about 12 minutes remaining uh, to do the initial uh, install of OS 10 uh, Yosemite on the server hard drive. So we're going to let this run and just like I did before, I'll give you an idea and an estimate on how long it actually took uh, to get through that process. Okay, so it finished the process. It was about three minutes longer than it said, uh, but not too bad. And now it's going to restart my Mac and we'll see what it looks like as it comes up on the other side and on the restarts we always will get this Apple with the progress bar and whereas before it took a little while for the bar to go it looks like it's moving a little bit more quickly than before 
course, as I say that now it's slowing down a little bit. But uh, once it's done doing that, we'll go into the second phase then of the installation and we should almost be there. Okay, so there we go. It's taking me right into the welcome screen. And so I'm up and ready to go. Uh, that was a lot quicker process than uh, I've done it before. So let's go ahead and go through these steps. So we need to choose the uh, wherever you're at in terms of location. So in the United States. Uh, you click your keyboard. So what type of keyboard you've got. So US. Now you have the ability to transfer information to your Mac. And so again, that's just if you wanted to transfer from a Time Machine backup or another Mac or for a Windows PC. This is really the migration assistant that would do that for you. Since we did a clean install because we wanted to start fresh, we're not going to migrate anything, but just wanted to let you know what that was. So we're going to say continue. And now we need to sign in with our Apple ID so that everything can get set up for us with iCloud and all of that type of information. So I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, in here right now. And once you've, uh, once you've put that information in there, you just uh, click continue. And then ask you, do you want to uh, have your Mac be able to be found with Find My Mac? And so we're going to go ahead and allow that. That's fine. So now we need to agree to the terms and conditions. So we agree there. And here's where you set your, up your computer account. So whatever you want your computer account to be, you want to set that information up here. You've got kind of your full name. And you can use your iCloud account to log in if you want to do that. Uh, you can just set it up that way. Or if you uncheck this, then you've got to put in your own password information uh, to log into your computer. So it's really up to you which one works best for you. Uh, you can decide whether you want it to be your iCloud account uh, as the login or whether you want it to be uh, you know, something different that you set up with a different password and that information. So let me just go ahead and set that up real quick. And you can put in a hint if you want to put a hint in there. I'm just going to leave that blank. It is optional. And then you can say allow my Apple ID to, re uh, to reset this password if you needed to do that and set the time zone based on my current location. I'm going to leave those alone and we're going to say continue. And so now you can see over here that it's creating my account right now. And again, that's going to be what my home folder is. So this account name will be your home folder. And now we have the iCloud keychain. And so you can either set up uh, iCloud keychain or set it up later. Uh, I'm going to just set that up later and hit continue. Now with Apple's new focus on security, uh, it asks us if we want to start file vault uh, disk encryption. You can turn that on automatically. I'm not going to do that. Uh, again, you can allow your iCloud account to unlock it. I'm not going to do that right now because uh, I'm not so concerned with it right at this point. So I'm going to say continue. And now they ask whether or not you want to send uh, diagnostic stuff to Apple. And really, that's up to you if you want to do that or not. Um, I, I, for right now, I'm just going to uncheck that so that that doesn't get set up. We're going to say continue. And now it's setting up my Mac. You can see it's going through the paces here to get everything all set up and ready to go. And in a moment here, it should boot us into the Yosemite screen. And there we go. And so now we're sitting with a clean install of Yosemite. Uh, we've got a fresh desktop there. Uh, right away, it asks us about Time Machine and whether we want to do uh, backup with Time Machine or not. And so, uh, yes, we're going to use it as a backup disk. Uh, but I'm going to decide that later because I want to make sure I get everything restored before I actually start uh, Time Machine backups. So I'm going to switch over now to my other software, and then we will uh, do a conclusion. Okay, here we are back on my desktop with the clean install. And uh, in between, I had to update a few things. Uh, I had to put in, uh, again, up here is 1Password to get my Drobo going and uh, Dropbox. That's what those icons are up there. But now that we've got a clean install, now we can start the process of restoring the things that we did from our backup. Now what you can do is you can go uh, into the finder here and instead of just installing your applications one at a time, which you can do, you can go to the Mac App Store or you can go to the website to make that happen. Uh, what you can do also is go to your server backup here and the beauty of that is, is you've got all of your applications and things backed up so you could actually drag these over to the applications folder of your clean install and start to restore those applications that you've got. Then you'd go about uh, in the users folder here and drill in and do the same thing of restoring things into the, into the uh, documents and movies and music and pictures and all of that. You can put everything back where it was now that you've got your uh, new fresh install done of OS X Yosemite. So hopefully that helps you get started with doing a clean install on your Mac. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.